Oh, I love Brandon, man. Um, I have I have a special relationship with Brandon because he has a locker right next to me. We pulled our hamstring the same day in training camp. So we literally went through the same rehab. We're with each other every single day. Uh, so I felt like I got a good inside look at Brandon and just how, kind of how he ticks. And this is a guy that just wants to be great so bad. Like he wants to put in that work. He wants to grind. Um, and he, he just wants to do it. It's not something that he's being forced to or feels obligated. Uh, you know, I was a first round pick. I got to live up to these expectations. No, like this, it, this was in him, no matter what this guy was going to want to be successful. Um, and he just, he wants somebody to follow, you know, he wants, um, you know, a good veteran leader. And we had a couple at, at some points during the season, we had um, Muhammad Sanu uh, in there for a little bit, but I feel like, he would really benefit, um, you know, how Debo did with having Emmanuel Sanders in the locker room. He just needs that mentor, that veteran receiver uh, to, to show him uh, exactly how it's done. Uh, because if, if he sees it, he's going to emulate it and put his own um, style on it. And, and he's, he's just going to be great, man, because he wants it so bad. That's what Kyle Juszczyk said about Brandon Ayuk on our podcast. Yes, it is. That's Guy. This is John. Subscribe to the page. Like the video. And our podcast is down in the description. I think one thing, listening to Juszczyk talk about Ayuk, and John, when you scouted in the league, you, you've you told me about this. One of the hardest things to capture is whether or not a player wants, loves, wants to succeed at football, loves to play football. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing I took away from what Juszczyk said. Like, we can all see that Ayuk's really good. But here's a guy who was a close teammate of his saying, no, it's the, it's the thing that he has inside that's, that's really valuable. I think that's, that's pretty re- reassuring for people to hear. I think one of the number one things you talk about in scouting meetings is once you get a guy that's a you know, first-round level talent is the intangible stuff around football. How much does he like football? How much does he like to compete? How tough is he? You know, how much, like, what does the game mean to him? And I... I think sometimes you see this during the draft time on social media. They get uncomfortable. Like, why can't people have balance? Well, the greatest quarterback of all time has zero balance. <laughs> I mean, he dedicated his entire life. And I think when it, when we think of just the group of the great quarterbacks of like our adult life, right, of like the last 20 years, they've all been guys that feel like all their chips went in the middle of the table on football. Like it doesn't, like Drew Brees. When I think Drew Brees, I think two things. Football family, nothing else. Like I, he's just all in. Roger's somewhat unique, but I don't think he talks about it a lot. And I I think, you know, clear, you don't get that good without dedicating your entire life. And then clearly you just go around to the different positions. Like Aaron, I heard stories about Aaron Donald at Rams practices the last couple years. It was like, they had to go to him and be like, Aaron, you need to slow down. We can't run a drill. And I, you know, that's, we've always heard like with the Niner group that like the Harbaugh kind of crew of, the Joe Staley's, the Patrick Willis's, like what really made Justin Smith, what really made those guys great is like, God, these guys were just all in on football. I think sometimes with wide receivers, it's hard to tell, right? Because you're getting the amount of guys, they come in with non-quarterback, would you say the most hype? The the most kind of like NBA-ish kind of stars. Uh, And it can get out of control. I think Antonio Brown is a good example of a guy that like came out of nowhere a little bit worked his way to like just superstardom and then it kind of fell apart and Terrell Owens they're just like this balance that you're always trying to strike it perfectly with a wide receiver like who would you say right now in the league like Devontae Adams Keenan Allen you're just like I fucking want the I think kind of say what you want about him Diggs is dude balls yeah right? yeah uh, you you're know, talking just, about I, the total package I watch Diggs and I go I'd want that guy on my team right you know like Michael Thomas is a guy that like it looked like it and then something weird happened How's a guy going to react once he gets money? Uh, we think Debo has it. It's just, can he stay healthy? Ayuk, you and I both watch too much probably Arizona State football over the years. I thought just based on the two guys' college careers, I would have bet on Nikhil Harry. And now it's like two years later, it ain't even. I would sell all my Nikhil Harry stock like a year ago, and I would double down on this guy. Yeah, consider it sold. This guy was a better player, or this guy – was not now his junior college or whatever, but Nikhil was more impactful in college than this guy. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. This guy was behind. He was overshadowed by Nikhil Harry. But even like um, when they got both each got their one year to shine, like Nikhil's last year and his last year there. 
Yeah. I Nik- feel like Nikhil's was more like pop that one year of uh, making plays. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's accurate. But Fair I also or not. think but I also think that um you know, from what I had heard, the review basically that Herm Edwards gave that they loved from what I'd heard, they loved Ayuk at ASU even more than they liked Nikhil Harry, just in terms of like gotcha. the, the, the player, the guy, right? In terms of how all in he was. Um, not that I heard anything bad about Nikhil, but they just, they really liked Ayuk. And remember, a big part of that was Herm knows Lynch. And like they, I think Herm really uh, kind of went, went to the mat for him and that staff gave them great reviews and all that. Um, but I also think it was interesting to hear Kyle, like, do the Niners have a place financially for an older receiver that can be a, that can be an example for Brandon Ayuk, right? That was another part of what he said. It's like he also it'd be great for him to have that guy to show him how it's done, and what would that guy cost, and would he cost so much that it's not worth the you know because you're number one you you've drafted Debo and Ayuk and you got Kittle like you're not bringing in a number two receiver even to this mix. The reason you've drafted these guys is so you don't have to spend the money on a number one or a number two free agent receiver, right? Is it Kendrick? I don't know, um, but I Larry, can, Fitzgerald? Larry Fitzgerald is a free agent. Yeah, no, it's honestly like, what's he going to cost? Well, Cliff said they want beach. him back, but you know, he's a West Coast guy, just bring him up. <laughs> I it's it's this first guy that came to my mind too, because I don't think you like T. Y. Hilton or like somebody like that, right? Doesn't, too expensive, too expensive, and redundant. Like it doesn't yeah. even. Um, so I don't. I think I don't if, know, if you go thought. the Larry route, and who knows? I mean, it does feel like he's always inclined to go back. But uh, you know, just get Kyle on the phone with him. He did say that thing to that kid about Kyler. You know, what is what was that? I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it would be a unique opportunity. Now the thing is, when you get a guy like that, no value on special teams. You wouldn't play him on special teams. It is somewhat of a luxury. And I think you ask yourself, do, do they need that? I mean, he brings it up, but. Do these guys just be Kittle's there, Kyle's there, can you get away with it? But they don't I guess beside Kittle, and if they re-sign Kendrick Bourne, like they don't really have that guy on their offense, right? Trent Williams. Talk about like a veteran guy. Yeah, I'd say yeah. Trent would be a guy long many time pro bowler that has some juice. I think Kittle has that juice. Maybe I think there's a hard balance. Like, do they really need it? Is that sometimes overvalued? Only you would know in that locker room and kind of with that little group if you need it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like to me, if you had landed Matt Stafford, like that would be enough. Right. He'd been in the league for a decade to hold the guys to a high standard. Maybe they do. Maybe they get a younger quarterback. That's a good point. Your it. quarterback can run, can have that role potentially, although they're not, they don't have that right now. Like Jimmy Garoppolo they, is not doing that. Let's say they trade up in the draft for like a Trey Lance. I think it would even be more inclined to like maybe just overpay Larry to get him around or, you know, whoever right. that. I'm, try, I'm trying to think. Is Anquan Bolton, can Anquan Bolton still? You might have I mean, uh, he's, well, he's always left. been the same. He's probably the same speed as he was 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, funny. You start thinking of names that kind of like, uh, Tyler Lockett. You're, you're like way too expensive. You're right, well, like, every guy's T-Y, too expensive. Like, T- even if T.Y. took a, had to take a one-year kind of prove-it deal because he's been banged up, what is the one-year prove-it deal for T.Y.? Eight, ten million dollars? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to... Maybe somebody in the comments can give us a, a good... There, uh, there was a report. The Allen Robinson? Too expensive. Yeah, he'd be sweet. There, there was a report like a couple weeks ago that they want to re- – like to me, you want to keep the Kendrick Bournes. Because to me, clearly yes. for Kendrick Bourne to make it, he is the type guy like clearly operates like a pro, works his ass off. Because you don't make it with that from where he starts to where he is now without that. So to me, if you keep him, maybe you feel comfortable, right? Uh, you, you know, you said a name earlier, Antonio Brown's free agent, veteran. Do you think he's going to get some more love out in the open market this year? No. Do you? Uh, I just, he's too talented to not. I just think he's just one of those. You just. You think he's ready you know, for he's a changed. breakout, a re-breakout? Well, I mean, Tony Robbins and him are manifesting, so. <laughs> AJ Green? Not crazy. Can I get for $1 million? Yeah, that's what, I mean, that's what we're talking about here. But anyway, um, I, that was really unique insight. And uh, I know we talk about Ayuk a lot. People love Ayuk. And so that was, that was cool from Kyle. It was.